Okay, welcome to part two of the video that was not supposed to have a part two. This is the Tormox surface grinder I got like three weeks ago. Then I made a video about it. Then I didn't do anything uh, video-wise with it. So uh, now I'm doing a video on it. Cool. So I installed a mister. So this is really easy. Bought it on Amazon. I bought a decent quality one. It's from China, but I wanted to get a decent quality one. I think I paid 50 bucks for it. Uh, air goes in here. For some reason, there's some sort of weird metric fitting on here. Uh, well, because it's from China, I guess they just... Anyways, it's just... It's quarter-inch NPT, so that's good. Um, I actually use 3-8 fittings, blah, blah, blah. Got a little coolant tank here. I took some of my old coolant that I wasn't using when I switched coolants, uh, mixed that up, and it comes with this little hose, and then there's a uh, filter on the end. Uh, works pretty good. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it. I uh, screwed in into the top of the cabinet. There's no nothing under here, so I figured that was probably the best. I didn't want to like drill into the casting. Um, yeah, so it basically just sprays, um, you know, atomized coolant and uh, water at the cutting edge, at the grinding edge. And supposedly this is for better finishes, but I don't know if I'm gonna get much better finishes. I ground the chuck in, so that took forever. And something really interesting about this thing, when you grind the chuck in, like you have to really make sure that the chuck is sitting, I think it's a little more uh, right on this, on the table, because the end of the travel is really close to, like, it doesn't extend this far. And so what ended up happening was I went as far as I could, and I did the auto feed, you do like the, uh, this one, this, that's what's on Tormach's video anyways. And I did that, and it ended up, it hit, it didn't stop quick enough, and it ended up bumping the screw, I think it's a ball screw, into the end, and it caused the table to pop up. So it ended up causing the grinding wheel to take a nice chunk out of the corner here. So my remedy was that for that was to slow the speed down. And then it went pretty good uh, after that. There's this from the previous owners. Who knows what happened there. And it did leave this very interesting one-track line right there. Very distinct. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to pick it up on camera. But... So I don't know, there might be some sort of wear spot in Y, but who knows. And uh, yeah, other than that, it's been treating me very good. I, uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I got two blades that I just heat treated. Yeah, these packs. I grab scissors. Um, let's see. So, heat treating foil. Uh, I can't remember what brand of stainless. Use some baking soda and clean the blades with acetone. I have noticed that the blades have been, the bags have been puffing up, and I think that's because they're not sealed all the way, which is, uh, makes flattening them out on the press kind of a pain. So, yeah, see that one, we got hit by oxygen on that one. The idea is to make the atmosphere inert, or, you know, oxygenless. I don't know if that's the definition of inert, but there's one. Here's the second one. I think what I'm going to start doing is buying the actually pre-laser welded bags. Yeah, see this one's a lot better. This is, it's supposed to look like this. As you can see, oxygen hit the tip here. But it's supposed to be clean like this, as opposed to this, which is a complete train wreck. But nonetheless, it should be still fine. Uh, so what I do is I surface grind the part that came from the factory flat, so I buy the material just uh, face ground, or uh, uh, face milled. So I'm just going to use this side and we're going to put it down on the chuck here. And then uh, same thing. And yeah, what I'll do is basically take, I'll basically clean one surface up, uh, nice and perfect, and then we'll measure it, we'll flip it over, we'll take it off, measure it, flip it over, and then we'll just grind to final depth. And I think uh, that'll be good. Yeah, at least that's how I've been doing it, and the results have been a lot, lot better than trying to face on the machine. Like, spectacular results, really, within, like, a tenth over the whole, the three inches, which is making me really happy. So, yeah, I also changed up the blade fixture plate. That's why there's no tabs on here now, so we're doing tabless. And this is already, the whole pivot hole's already cut to size, and we just barrel lap to uh, final size. That way it fits on the fixture. Here's where the knife's at. Looking really good. This is one I'm doing for the uh, wife. Cool.
cool. Action's uh, way better. This is pretty much done. I need to sharpen it. And I need to work on the actual lockup a little bit. So I found out you're supposed to put a angle on the tang of the blade and have this flat lock bar hit it on a, a certain angle basically. And I'd been just doing like flat surface to flat surface. And you're not supposed to do that. There's actually supposed to be only a really tiny contact point and contact at that certain angle to get that, that basically uh, the right uh, lockup, if you will. So there is a little bit of what's uh, lock rock, I guess it's called, if you do this. This is pretty extreme. The angle is wrong on the back of the blade, but um, I have to machine. That's what I'm going to take these. I'm going to machine new angles and see if that fixes our lock rock issue. And then really after that, they are completely sellable. So, all right, let's do this surface plate thing. Um, you're supposed to, per the fine world internet experts, drop the parts onto the service plate, not slide the parts. Oh, before we do that, uh, let's turn it on. <laughs> cool. a really really light pass and you take it really quick I guess until the whole surface is cleaned up and then you never shut the spindle off or the motor off and then you put your parts on and you just go I think Move down in like one thou increments when I get really close. And go pretty fast. I think I just heard it. My imagination. See the wheels really loaded up. Now, I'm not not really sure if it's supposed to load up like that when doing the mist coolant thing, but who knows? I'm sure someone will educate me. All right, so I've been doing grinding basically uh, along the uh, x-axis. So I'm gonna try to do grinding along the y-axis and see if the surface finish comes out a little bit better because I've been having. Like I said, that line that's in the chuck seems to get transferred to the part. So I'm going to see if that we can un untranslate that by doing it um, in the direction I just told you. I'm also really unsure how to clean this thing. Probably just send right there. Obviously you want to get the chuck really clean, but after you dress it, stuff flies onto the chuck, so... And I'm not... Doing Google searches trying to figure out the best way to clean the chuck before you put parts on them was not exactly the, uh... uh I didn't find much on the topic. Another thing I'm curious about is I wonder if the parts should touch or if they should have a gap. 
I'm sure that does something to the surface finish, but I'm not too sure. And I also don't have a backer, which you're supposed to use, I guess. That's like to keep it from sliding away. But I found that after throwing a couple parts off the chuck, that if I just take one power roughing passes, things don't fly away. So that's my that's my solution to that. When I do the top grinding, because the bottom isn't necessarily flat, I try to do like less aggressive roughing passes because there's obviously uh, less surface contact because it might not necessarily be as flat as the chuck. So clean it up with really light passes, maybe like five tenths. That way it doesn't run away from us. And uh, yeah. Also another thing, the gib adjustment on the top is very finicky. Like it has a problem going down in one thousand increments without jumping sometimes. So that's something I have to like kind of look out for. So I have to always make sure to bring the wheel down when the uh, wheel is actually not touching the parts. That might just be a normal thing though. Set the side adjustment. That side's good. So this side needs to come over. These are like the stops or whatever for the auto thing. More. Cool. I'll do. Sweet, those are set. So now we'll slowly bring the wheel down. I'm gonna guess the one with more mill scale is taller, so I'm gonna kind of touch up on that really slowly. All right, so we touched off. The mill scale is a little bit taller. Yep, so we'll do really light passes. I'm going to turn the coolant on and then we'll just do uh, really, really light passes. So the first pass is done, so we really didn't take much off, so I'm just going to bring it down one foul. And then let her go again. And I don't, it's not going to take any material off the second blade closest to our right, because I faced that down more than the other one. Alright, so I went through these and got them all cleaned up. This is the first side. Looks pretty good. So I'll take those off and then uh, measure them, flip them over, and then we'll start doing the back side. So here's the finish I got. Not terrible, there's some lines up here and uh, back here. This one came out better, I'm not sure why, but so basically those are now flat, but they're not necessarily parallel. 
to the other side, which is the whole point of doing this. I mean, the flatness is nice, but you want the blade parallel. Um, so we take our mic. And this is not as accurate as it could be, because if you face both sides and then measure it, it would be. Huh. That's not good. I somehow faced them well below our... They're 110, they're supposed to be 120. Whoops! Well... That's uh, not good. Those are scrap now. Uh, okay, um, catch you on the next one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to day two days later after I filmed the last disappointing sequence. All right, here is the new blades, the take two, if you will. I couldn't leave you on a cliffhanger like that. Disappointing cliffhanger. Um, let's see. So 120, like within two tenths, I did have to kind of flip it over and get rid of these scratches, which made it like this pattern mismatch, but the, uh, why do I feel so zoomed in? Um, surface grinding is really weird, and your human, your, <laughs> your eyes can uh, pick up surface uh, changes like really well, which is, can be kind of annoying when you're making, uh, you know, fine art, such as knives. Uh, yeah, but you can't, I can't feel the change in surface here. Um, so I'm not too worried. I'm hoping that'll tumble out. So what I've been doing is obviously taking the heat treated blade blanks. They're cut to size properly and <coughs> and uh, <clears throat> just a little bit of grind dust in there. And um, yeah, then putting them on the machine like this, put a dowel pin in the hole. There's a dowel pin for the stop. I need a haircut. <laughs> And uh, yeah, then it gets clamped, and that's how you locate it on the fixture plate. So I'm going to end this video in on a high note, but I'm going to start recording the next video, which is me going over the uh, my current blade cutting process, which has been improved dramatically over the last couple months. This is the most current finished iteration off the machine, tumbled. Um, but yeah, I'll get into that in the next video, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to see more, well, you know what to do.